the week. Ladies, save the date for the Sisterhood Social hosted by Sisters in the Spirit on Saturday, April 20th from noon to 2 p.m. You will enjoy an afternoon of painting, eating, and fellowship. You may register for this event in the foyer after 10 a.m. service from March 31st through April 14th. The cost is $15 per person. Space is limited, so be sure to register early. Save the date for May 19th as we gear up to celebrate our 73rd church anniversary. In preparation for our church anniversary this year, we are asking each member to donate $100 to the church anniversary. You may give through our many giving options, including text to give, online giving, or in person. The youth ministry would like to thank each and every one of you who supported our Good Friday egg hunt. Thank you for all the financial donations, candy, thousands of eggs, and also to the volunteers. We love and appreciate you. The youth ministry will be collecting toiletry donations for youth of color in foster care for the entire month of April. When our children are placed in foster care, Agencies do not have adequate supplies to meet the needs of children of color. The youth ministry will be donating hair care products, soaps, oils, lotions, and feminine care products to the Harris County Rainbow Room. Donations may be left in the foyer of the main sanctuary. Please contact Sister Leslie Cunningham for more information. Bella Vista, join us as we go blue Sunday April 21st in solidarity against child abuse and to also bring awareness to autism. The Bella Vista annual book drive will be April 21st. There will be books for all ages. For more information, please contact Brother and Sister Morgan. Join us Sunday, April 21st in the Multipurpose Building after service for Sundays on Sunday. Youth Sunday School will be returning in May. If you are interested in volunteering as a teacher, please contact Sister Leslie Cunningham. Beginning in the month of May, join Pastor Davis, Pastor Bobby Thomas, and Reverend Eric Bingham each week for our Power for Life Bible study to grow in your understanding of God's Word. An in-person Bible study option will be available at 7.30 p.m. on Tuesdays, and the online virtual option will remain on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Join us in either one of those experiences and receive power for life. The men's ministry will be having their bi-monthly meeting on Monday, April 8th from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. in the Multipurpose Building. Pastor Davis will be speaking on the lesson topic, Life Coach from Isaiah 9 and 6. If you have announcements to share, please be aware the deadline is Wednesdays at 2 p.m. You can email your announcement to announcements at bellavistanbc.org or kpriester at bellavistanbc.org. Stay safe, family, and as always, everyone, have a great week. Good morning, Bella Vista family and friends. Here are your announcements for the week. Ladies, save the date for the Sisterhood Social hosted by Sisters in the Spirit on Saturday, April 20th from noon to 2 p.m. You will enjoy an afternoon of painting, eating, and fellowship. You may register for this event in the foyer after 10 a.m. service from March 31st through April 14th. The cost is $15 per person. Space is limited, so be sure to register early. Save the date for May 19th as we gear up to celebrate our 73rd church anniversary. In preparation for our church anniversary this year, we are asking each member to donate $100 to the church anniversary. You may give through our many giving options, including text to give, online giving, or in person. The youth ministry would like to thank each and every one of you who supported our Good Friday egg hunt. 
Thank you for all the financial donations, candy, thousands of eggs, and also to the volunteers. We love and appreciate you. The youth ministry will be collecting toiletry donations for youth of color in foster care for the entire month of April. When our children are placed in foster care, agencies do not have adequate supplies to meet the needs of children of color. The youth ministry will be donating hair care products, soaps, oils, lotions, and feminine care products to the Harris County Rainbow Room. Donations may be left in the foyer of the main sanctuary. Please contact Sister Leslie Cunningham for more information. Bella Vista, join us as we go blue Sunday, April 21st in solidarity against child abuse and to also bring awareness to autism. The Bella Vista annual book drive will be April 21st. There will be books for all ages. For more information, please contact Brother and Sister Morgan. Join us Sunday, April 21st in the Multipurpose Building after service for Sundays on Sunday. Youth Sunday School will be returning in May. If you are interested in volunteering as a teacher, please contact Sister Leslie Cunningham. Beginning in the month of May, join Pastor Davis, Pastor Bobby Thomas, and Reverend Eric Bingham each week for our Power for Life Bible study to grow in your understanding of God's Word. An in-person Bible study option will be available at 7.30 p.m. on Tuesdays, and the online virtual option will remain on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Join us in either one of those experiences and receive Power for Life. The men's ministry will be having their bi-monthly meeting on Monday, April 8th from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. in the Multipurpose Building. Pastor Davis will be speaking on the lesson topic, Life Coach, from Isaiah 9 and 6. If you have announcements to share, please be aware the deadline is Wednesdays at 2 p.m. You can email your announcement to announcements at bellavistanbc.org or kpriester at bellavistanbc.org. Stay safe, family, and as always, everyone, have a great week. Good morning, Bella Vista family and friends. Here are your announcements for the week. Ladies, save the date for the Sisterhood Social hosted by Sisters in the Spirit on Saturday, April 20th from noon to 2 p.m. You will enjoy an afternoon of painting, eating, and fellowship. You may register for this event in the foyer after 10 a.m. service from March 31st through April 14th. The cost is $15 per person. Space is limited, so be sure to register early. Save the date for May 19th as we gear up to celebrate our 73rd church anniversary. In preparation for our church anniversary this year, we are asking each member to donate $100 to the church anniversary. You may give through our many giving options, including text to give, online giving, or in person. The youth ministry would like to thank each and every one of you who supported our Good Friday egg hunt. Thank you for all the financial donations, candy, thousands of eggs, and also to the volunteers. We love and appreciate you. The youth ministry will be collecting toiletry donations for youth of color in foster care for the entire month of April. When our children are placed in foster care, Agencies do not have adequate supplies to meet the needs of children of color. The youth ministry will be donating hair care products, soaps, oils, lotions, and feminine care products to the Harris County Rainbow Room. Donations may be left in the foyer of the main sanctuary. Please contact Sister Leslie Cunningham for more information. Bella Vista, join us as we go blue Sunday April 21st in solidarity against child abuse and to also bring awareness to autism. The Bella Vista Amy
He woke me up this morning. I was clothed in my right mind. He didn't let me sleep too late because he woke me up on time. He woke me up this morning and started me on my way. The Lord is blessing me right now, right now. The Lord is blessing me. The Lord, Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer, our Deliverer, the Lord is blessing me right now, right now, right now. Let us stand and recite unison our statement at Bella Vesta we care about the total person we encourage people to love God our scripture for this morning that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, that we have seen our eyes, which we looked upon our hands and have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested that we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life, which was with the Father, was manifested to us. That which we have heard, we declare to you, that you also have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. This is the message to which we have heard from him. You have declared that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. But if we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleansing us from all sins. And if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to clean us from all unrighteousness. And if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and the word is not in us. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation of our, our sins. And not for our, but only, not ours only, but also for the whole world. Father God, we come right now. We, we thank you for just being God. And here we are, Lord, on this brand new day. Lord, because we have brand new mercies. A new day equals new mercies. And the reason why you've given us new mercies this morning, because you keep on giving us another chance. And another chance. And another chance. A chance that we don't deserve. Because we just read, Lord, that we all are sinners. And every time we sin, you deserve to kill us off. But somehow, some way, you keep waking us up this morning. And you always close us in our right mind. So we drove all this way. We came from many directions. But we come for one reason and one reason only. That is to give you the praise, give you the honor, and magnify your name. Because we all know tomorrow is not promised. Earthquakes everywhere. Danger everywhere. Fire is everywhere. So Lord, we're going to worship you like it's our last time. We're going to lift up our hands. We're going to stump our feet. We're going to sing our song like it's our last time. Because you are a good God. 
You are kind God. You are sweet God. You are holy God. You are forgiven God. You are righteous God. You are worthy to be praised. We thank you for things we have. We thank you for things we don't have. We thank you, God. We thank you. So while we in church, help us to have church. Help us to clear our minds and focus totally on you. Because this is your time. So help us to give you not just praise, but help us give you true praise. Authentic praise is what we offer you today. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. Incline your ear to us and give us your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, happy day. Sing with me, church. Oh, happy day. When Jesus was when Jesus was, when Jesus was, he washed my sins away. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. When Jesus was, when Jesus was, when my Jesus was, he washed my sins away. Good morning, church. I said, good morning, church. This is the day that the Lord has made. Can you put your hands together and rejoice and be glad in them? How grateful we are to God that this morning, God has blessed us in allowing the baptismal pool here at the Bella Vista Church to once again be filled with water. I said God has blessed us to allow this baptismal pool to once again be filled with water, which means we have persons who have come to publicly identify, publicly declare that Jesus Christ lives within them and that they live in he as well. How grateful to God we are this morning, church. We have three young men, three men who are coming to be baptized. We give God the glory. At this time, Deacon Billy Cleveland is going to read to us out of the word of God to set our focus and our attention on the significance of this ordinance. And then we will take these three brothers to baptism. Let's rejoice in this moment of baptism. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Esaias, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, Make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leather girdle about his lines. And his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Amen. Amen. God be praised. Our first young brother that we're taking into the waters of baptis baptism today, excuse me, is no stranger to our church family, grew up here. That is Brother Reginald Collins. And we know. <laughs> yes, family and friends who are here, all of those who are here in celebration and recognition of Brother Collins, will you just stand or wave your hand uh, so that he might see you in this moment? Amen. God be praised. And so, Brother Reginald, in obedience to the great commission of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, 
and upon your profession of faith in him. We do now prepare to baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our second baptismal candidate this morning, church, is another brother by the name of Kenny Crawford. He had, amen. <laughs> brother Kenny was scheduled to be baptized uh, some months ago. He's been away from us uh, with an illness, but we thank God that the Lord has brought him back uh, to this place. <laughs> His son is seated with him, but if there are any others who are here in support of Brother Crawford, Will you stand or will you wave your hand so that he might see you in this moment? Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. And so, Brother Kenny Crawford, in obedience to the great commission of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and upon your profession of faith in him, we do now prepare to baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Our last baptismal candidate this morning. It's none other than my nephew, Brother Christian Davis. Amen. His father, Minister Justin Davis, serves as our drummer and our percussionist. He's here with him as well as his grandfather. And I know that we have other family members who are in support as well. Let's see, JC, you at this time, all family, friends, and supporters of Christian. Just wave or stand up so that he can see you. Amen. And so, Brother Christian, in obedience to the great commission of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and upon your profession of faith in him, we do now prepare to baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Church, let us stand to our feet and give God praise. Is that the best you have for God? Let's give God praise for what he has allowed our eyes to witness and our hearts to feel this morning. Amen. To God be the glory. We thank God for the privilege of worship. We ask now that those of you who are physically able to stand, if you would Remain standing as our music ministry comes to lead us in our period of praise and worship. To God be the glory. Come on, put those hands together once again. We sing the praises to our King, for He is the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He's mighty in battle. How many of you believe that this morning? Y'all talk to me. Roll that footage up. Come on, put your hands together this morning. Come on, put them together, put them together. 
Hey. If you know this, you can sing along with us. Yeah, all your beautiful smiling faces. Come on, let me see you wave your hands if you love the Lord this morning. Hey. <laughs> Let's go. We sing. Say it again. Say it one more time. We sing the praises. Give him glory. Give him glory. For he is. Give him glory. For he, he is, give him glory. glory. Take it from the top. We sing. sing <laughs> One more time. Give him glory. Give him glory. Oh, oh, oh. Give him glory, hey! Give him glory, for he. Give him glory. Here we go. All hail King Jesus. All hail King Jesus. Come on, put your hands together. All hail Emmanuel. Let's say it again together. Oh, hell, King Jesus. Oh, hell, King Jesus. Oh, hell, Emmanuel. Let's break it in. Break it in. He raised for spread.
King Jesus. Come on, put your hands together. Put them together. Put them together. Put them together. He reigns. 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 Hey, let's go. He reigns. Oh, oh, Let's break it in. Oh, hell, King Jesus. Oh, hell, King Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah is the highest praise. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Hallelujah is the highest praise. You got something to praise him about. You got something to shout about. You got something to thank him about. You got something to lift him about. You put your hands together. You're out of hell clapping in your hands. You out of hell stomping in your feet. You out of hell running in your soul. You out of hell praising your heart. Hallelujah. Oh, hey, 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 You didn't make it here by yourself. You didn't make it here on your own. You didn't wake yourself up. You didn't heal your body. He reigns in your heart. He reigns in your soul. He reigns in your life. Hallelujah. Hey. My, 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 my. Come on, if you know God reigns, just lift up your hands and tell them, God, you reign. Over my circumstance, you reign. Giving me another chance. You reign, you reign. You reign. He shall reign forever. He shall reign forever. He shall reign forever. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Y'all don't want to worship with me. I got. Come on, sing it with me if you know it. We just gonna sing a verse or two. We come to worship the king. I said we've come to worship the king with wisdom. Wisdom. Anybody come to worship the king today? I got is it all? Say it again, I got. Is it awesome? He reigns heaven above with wings, dumb power and love. God is an awesome. Say it one more time, my God. Hallelujah. He reigns. Heaven above with wisdom. Our God is an awesome God. Come on, put those hands together. Come on, open up your mouth. Declare that he's awesome. God, you're awesome. 
God, you're awesome. God, you're mighty. God, you're holy. God, you're righteous. You reign forever. Hallelujah. He's an awesome God. 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 Y'all awesome know what that means, y'all? It just means God is so much God. That when you think about the, all that God does and all of who God is, it just takes your breath away. It just blows your mind. Have you ever had God blow your mind? Just absolutely take your breath away. You should have had one of those moments this morning when, when your eyes opened and you yawned and inhaled that deep breath. Right then and there, you should have said, my God is an awesome God. He kept me alive. He kept me in my mind. He kept my limbs moving. He kept peace in my heart. He's an awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome God. Yes, he is. He's an awesome God. And we give him all of the glory. We give him all of the glory, all of the honor and the praise. We greet you in the name of God, our Father, our Lord, and liberator, Jesus Christ, and the precious Holy Spirit, who is our comfort and our guide. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. I hope and pray that you are as well. He didn't have to let us live. He did not have to let us live, but I'm glad to be here one more time we reverence the spirit of christ and the presence of god amongst us and we also thank god uh, that we are blessed to be in the presence and in the company of one another uh, will you look to somebody to your left or to your right just tell them i'm glad you're here this morning yeah i'm so glad you're here i'm glad to see you i'm glad god kept you alive and if you really mean that you ought to give god praise right there I'm, I'm glad God kept you alive. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. I don't know what it took for you to get here. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know what it took for you to get here, but I, I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad you pressed your way. Yeah. My, my. My, my. Somebody said, I had to fight to get here. I had to, I had to struggle to get here, but I'm glad I made it. I'm glad I made it. Because there's something I get here I can't get nowhere else. I'm glad I made it. I'm glad you're here, glad you're here. I'm especially glad to see Mother Wingate with us this morning. Come on, y'all give God praise for Mother Wingate been away from us for quite some time but we thank God that he's made us strong enough yeah to be in the house of the Lord God bless you dear God bless you dear God bless you so good to see your smile and face once again in this place and to any other visitors who might be with us in person or online we thank you so much for joining us in fact if you are visiting and worship with us, will you just wave your hand? Will you stand? Will you make it known in the chat or in the comment section? We just want to let you know we're glad you're here. I see a visitor there. I see visitors back there. Come on, church. I see visitors here. Give God praise for our visitors, church. We, we welcome you. We welcome you to the Bella Vista Missionary Baptist Church, where we are affectionately known as the church that cares. And you have already heard it said, at least I believe you have that here at the church that cares we care about the total person it is here with God's help that we're doing our very best to help people love God 
to build relationships and improve their lives. And we thank God that today the Lord ordered your steps and your stops, whether it was by invitation or under your own volition, to come and be a part of our worship experience today. If you have pastors, if you have church homes of your own, I want you to take back to them this morning the warmest greetings of Bella Vista. But if you do not have a pastor, if you do not have a church, we believe you're in the right place at the right time today. And we're excited about whatever God has in store for you. All we ask is that, you, is that you remain open to whatever the Spirit wants to do in your life today. God bless you and welcome. Thank God again, church, for all those who are visiting in person or online. We pass those sentiments to you as well. If you're watching us in the social sanctuary today. A lot to cover today, and so I'm going to ask now that if we would direct our attention to the video monitors at this time for our morning announcements so that we might hear Good and morning, listen what's Bill going on in our family church. and friends, here are your announcements for the week. Ladies, save the date for the Sisterhood Social hosted by Sisters in the Spirit on Saturday, April 20th from noon to 2 p.m. You will enjoy an afternoon of painting, eating, and fellowship. You may register for this event in the foyer after 10 a.m. service from March 31st through April 14th. The cost is $15 per person. Space is limited, so be sure to register early. Save the date for May 19th as we gear up to celebrate our 73rd church anniversary. In preparation for our church anniversary this year, we are asking each member to donate $100 to the church anniversary. You may give through our many giving options, including text to give, online giving, or in person. The youth ministry would like to thank each and every one of you who supported our Good Friday egg hunt. Thank you for all the financial donations, candy, thousands of eggs, and also to the volunteers. We love and appreciate you. The youth ministry will be collecting toiletry donations for youth of color in foster care for the entire month of April. When our children are placed in foster care, agencies do not have adequate supplies to meet the needs of children of color. The youth ministry will be donating hair care products, soaps, oils, lotions, and feminine care products to the Harris County Rainbow Room. Donations may be left in the foyer of the main sanctuary. Please contact Sister Leslie Cunningham for more information. Bella Vista, join us as we go blue Sunday, April 21st in solidarity against child abuse and to also bring awareness to autism. The Bella Vista Annual Book Drive will be April 21st. There will be books for all ages. For more information, please contact Brother and Sister Morgan. Join us Sunday, April 21st in the Multipurpose Building after service for Sundays on Sunday. Youth Sunday School will be returning in May. If you are interested in volunteering as a teacher, please contact Sister Leslie Cunningham. Beginning in the month of May, join Pastor Davis, Pastor Bobby Thomas, and Reverend Eric Bingham each week for our Power for Life Bible study to grow in your understanding of God's Word. An in-person Bible study option will be available at 7.30 p.m. on Tuesdays, and the online virtual option will remain on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Join us in either one of those experiences and receive Power for Life. The men's ministry will be having their bi-monthly meeting on Monday, April 8th from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. in the Multipurpose Building. Pastor Davis will be speaking on the lesson topic, Life Coach, from Isaiah 9 and 6. If you have announcements to share, please be aware the deadline is Wednesdays at 2 p.m. You can email your announcement to announcements at bellavistanbc.org or kpriester at bellavistanbc.org. Stay safe, family, and as always, everyone, have a great week. Amen. Let's praise God for all that is going on in the life of our church. 
and we look forward to a wonderful month of ministry and uh, everything that is going to be taking place this week. Just a couple of additions, uh, as you heard there, uh, on the third Sunday of this month, we're asking that all of you join us in uh, wearing blue as we bring uh, attention, as we highlight uh, child abuse as well as autism awareness. Uh, those are two uh, significant uh, things that are being highlighted in the month of April. And so uh, on that third Sunday, we're going to be, we're asking that you wear the color blue, any shade of blue. Uh, in addition to that, we have some lapel pins. Uh, if you want to add that or adorn that to your outfit that you're going to be wearing that day or just to wear all month, you're able to pick those up in the church foyer uh, as you leave on today. Amen. Let me reiterate all of the thank yous to all of our volunteers and to all of our leaders and to everyone who just made our Holy Week experience last week just a wonderful time in celebrating our risen Savior. Help me thank God for them. And we praise God for how he blessed us. We praise God for a wonderful Resurrection Sunday experience. Uh, our youth ministry, our music ministry, everybody was just absolutely awesome last week to the glory of God. And so we give God praise for each of you again uh, just for how uh, you consistently gave your time and your energy and your effort and even of your substance. Those of you who participated with us in our sacrificial giving, our Resurrection Sunday sacrificial giving uh, effort, we thank you so much and we praise God for you for your giving uh, also. And then one final tidbit, men, again, I want to reiterate that some wonderful things, some powerful things are happening in our men's ministry on Mondays when we meet every second and fourth Monday. And so this is my personal invitation again, and I know some other brothers will be extending invitations uh, today as well for every man, for every brother, whatever age or stage of life you're in, to meet us and join us in our mended men's ministry experience. I promise you that one hour investment that you make into your spiritual life, it will go a long way uh, in helping you to become the man that God has called and created you to be and to grow in your spiritual walk. So we invite you to be a part of that experience tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. right across the street in our multi-purpose building. We praise the Lord for that. At this time, I'm going to invite Deacon Phillips uh, to the microphone. Uh, he's going to share with us a word on behalf of our Act 2 youth ministry experience. Thank you, Pastor. <clears throat> Um, I am here on behalf of our, our Act 2 Youth Ministry. For those of you who don't know, that's what we do on second and fourth Sundays in the Multipurpose Center. It is a youth church activity that also includes a Bible study. And uh, I'm proud to say that I think that ministry is doing really, really well. Really well. And I'm really encouraged by that. Um, we have... Um, this year especially, we are entertaining about at least 40 children every second and fourth Sunday, consistently, consistently. And that, that is quite, that is quite uh, an increase from previous years. So I'm encouraged by that, as well as seeing our young people come to Christ. We saw one today, and you've seen others that have come to Christ through that ministry, and we praise God for that. All that being said, let me, the appeal is for your help because that ministry requires work. And so for the ministry, I think it's been, it's been in existence for about eight years, I think about eight years. Uh, and most of the people who are serving in that ministry have been there for that duration. And so the staff needs some help. We need help in all areas. So whatever you can do is going to be vitally important for that ministry to continue to grow and strengthen and be what it needs to be for our youth. It troubles me, you know, you don't even have to listen to the news, just exist today. And it's, it's all around you. But I shudder to think that when uh, we hear about teenagers and preteens robbing banks, you know, brutalizing and, and assaulting the elderly. I just hate, I would hate to hear the names of one of our children that we were, did not reach with the Word of God. And this is what our church is for. 
We can't make people bring their children, but I think we have to have what the children need. And to do that, we need your help. So when this, was, when this uh, program was designed, it was not designed for these teachers and staff to work every Sunday, which is why we really only do it second and fourth Sunday. We didn't get enough physical support to do it every Sunday. But we just need your help. I mean, if you can commit to one Sunday, that's fine. That'll allow us to rotate some of the other teachers out. They get a chance to spend more time in this worship service. We need this just like you need this. And so it's not the intent to keep anybody out of the worship service every Sunday. But we need your help in this area. We really do. If we want to continue to encourage our children and give them what they need spiritually. So we need teachers, especially. We need people to help with check-in and check-out. We need people to help prepare snacks. We give these children a little something to keep them going for the day. Because they're there for two hours, okay? Uh, we need all kinds of help. We need help in praise and worship. We need praise and worship leaders, okay? Uh, I'm 66 years old. I don't mind praising and worship, but sometimes these kids look at me kind of funny. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter your age. We get them going, but we can use you too, okay? Uh, just, for, just for a minute, if you work in the Act 2 ministry, raise your hand or stand if you can. I want people to see who we have working in that ministry. That's Sister uh, uh, Nancy back there. That's Sister Pearlie, Barbara Hubbard, uh, Hubbard, Charlotte Hubbard, I'm sorry. Our deacons here, they work there. Sister uh, Martin and, and uh, Elegant in the back. I'm sure uh, Sister West and Sister uh, uh, Allen and, and several others. But we need more help in that area. We really do. Uh, we're looking forward to taking this thing a little bit higher. It's got to get better. And the program's not about me. I've told Pastor uh, years ago that if it doesn't work because I'm not there, then something's wrong with it. That's right. Something's wrong with it. So please, see me today. See any one of these leaders that you know work in that, in that area so we can get some information from you and get you engrafted into that program. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Well said. Well said. Thank you so much. Deacon Phillips for that appeal, and I certainly hope, church, uh, that you would heed that appeal, and uh, if you felt uh, any conviction or any uh, tug at your conscience, that may be the Holy Spirit telling you that's, 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 that's where you need to do, that's where you need to be and what you need to be doing, and uh, so I certainly hope that you will heed that appeal, amen, and praise the Lord. Well, church, today is a wonderful day. It's a wonderful day. We have gathered here to worship, but it's uh, also a uh, very special and significant day. Uh, it's a day, a uh, church, where we get to uh, pause to highlight and uh, celebrate one of our own, one who has been uh, faithful, loyal uh, to this church, to the ministry of this church, to the progression of this church. Uh, he has no idea that this is going on today. And uh, so before I give away any more of it, G, just uh, roll that video for us, and uh, let's look to what the screens have to say. I just stopping by just to let you know that I love you and I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart for everything that you have done, everything that you are doing, everything that you are going to do. Um, it is long overdue for everything that you're about to experience. Um, I'm thankful to God that this opportunity is finally coming to pass for you. Um, again, I love you. I appreciate you. Congratulations on 30 years.
Revy Rev, congratulations on 30 years of service. Wow, you are such an inspiration, um, serving God's people for so many years, obeying uh, what God had set forth for your life. I want to thank you for being um, a pinnacle in my youth and leading um, me and my generation and teaching us about the Word of God um, and being present for so many of us, you know, showing up to major red performances personally, you know, graduations, um, baby showers and weddings now. I mean, you have been a huge part of our lives for so many years and for many, many, many more years to come, I hope. Thank you, thank you so much for your service. We love you. Mwah. Happy for 30 years of ministry. We graduations for you because 30 years is a lot of years. And that's almost a great year of ministry. You have 70 more years. Awesome. Happy. Bye. <laughs> Hi, Reverend Thomas. We just wanted to take a moment to wish you a happy anniversary. Happy 30 years in the ministry. Happy 30 years, Reverend Thomas. My man, Bobby Thomas. I mean, Pastor Bobby Thomas. No, Reverend. Reverend Bobby Thomas. I knew I'd get it right. Man, happy birth, happy 30th. 30 years of preaching. Oh, I was about to say, we went to school together. I know he ain't 30. <laughs> it is what it is. But man. We, have, we just want to say we're just so incredibly grateful for the impact that you put on our children's spiritual walk during those 30 years. And we just want to say may God continue to bless you with many more years of fruitful ministry. We love you, brother. Congratulations. Yes, sir. We love you. Very rare. You telling me it's been 30 years? 30 years? Man, you've impacted my life so much, man. Uh, 30 years ago, I was 14, man, and you taught me that you can be a Christian and you can still be cool and you can still be clean. Man, we formed the, the clean, cool Christians, man. And just you laying that blueprint of uh, loving God, being faithful to God. Going to prayer view, being from Studentwood the whole night, man. I forever look up to you, man, and you are a major part of my Christian walk with God. I love you, man. 30 years. Hey, Bobby, really? 30 years? Or are you 30 years old? Or 30 years of preaching? Hey, man, I just want to congratulate you on your 30 years of preaching. May the good Lord continue to bless and keep you in my prayer. Also, I know that you've blessed a lot of people, man, through the preaching and teaching of the gospel, young people, and also all in the community. You've even blessed the New Bethlehem family. So, man, congratulations again uh, from the New Bethlehem family, also the retired party, too, my wife and I, Linda. And uh, God bless you. God keep you in my prayer. Continue to preach the word of God. Happy, happy 30th anniversary. We have all been so, so lucky to know you. I thank you for always being a great father figure, a great pastor. Thank you for always caring. Thank you for truly being who you are. You have truly been a blessing in all of our lives in every single way that all of us have gotten to know you, whether that's a friend, a pastor, a dad, or anything. You've been great and I congratulate you and I applaud you and I'm so happy for your 30 years of success. Hey hubby, I just want to take the time out to acknowledge you and wish you a happy 30th anniversary on preaching and teaching God's word. Over the last decade that we've been together, I've witnessed you practice what you preach and have also witnessed the countless youth and young adults that have acknowledged the positive impact that you've had on their lives. I just want to encourage you to stay humble, keep doing what you're doing. God got you.
Reverend Bobby, 30 years. Oh my gosh, look what the Lord has done. It has been a pleasure knowing you during that period of time, but also to have had the pleasure of working with you in youth church. When you became youth pastor, a few of us tagged along and was under your leadership, and look what we did. So many wonderful things. The hands of praise, God anointed and appointed praise dance and banner ministry, the mind ministry, and so many other wonderful things that came under your leadership. You have been a blessing to the Bella Vista family and youth. You've been a blessing to the Sudewood community. You have been a blessing to all of the schools that you've worked with, with all the children. You have been a blessing to the seasoned saints of Bella Vista and again, the Independent Heights. We love you for all that you've done and what all you will continue to do. What Pastor Abe used to always say, only what you do for Christ will last. To God be the glory for all the wonderful things that you've done and all the lives you have touched. And, oh, what about Gospel Explosion? Come on, church. 30 years. 30 years. Three decades of preaching the good news of Jesus Christ and serving in the Lord's church as a minister of the gospel. Don't stop, church. Keep clapping. Thank God for 30 years. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Were you surprised? Well, you smell, all right. You might want to get you some more tissue. It ain't done. Have your seats. Have your seats. Have your seats. Where's Mother Thomas? Where's Mother Thomas? Well, come on, Sister Katie. Then after her, two of your homeboys are going to be speaking. Uh, Deacon Frederick McDowell, Brother Corey Blocker. Come on, y'all. Let's hear from them. Giving out unto God to Pastor Davis, associate ministers, members, and friends. Uh, I don't want to start yet. Uh, Reverend, uh, my mind is blank. Uh, I'm sorry. Reverend Nelson, he called Bobby his golden child. And uh, see, I, you want to know why. <laughs> well, he don't know why, but, you know. <laughs> well, uh, when he was born, uh, well, when he was being born, on the way to delivery, I had to go to x-ray. Doctor said, ooh, and that's another one. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know that he was there. And, uh, and uh, when he was born, you know, his twin, he liked the meat and the beans and stuff. She liked the meat. I mean, he liked, she liked the meat. He liked the beans. they just the opposite of each other. And they were little. He'd be the good baby. She'd be the bad one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, do you like, uh, do you like uh, hot sauce? There's a reason. When he... <laughs> When he was born, he sucked his thumb, and I put hot sauce on it. <laughs> I wrapped it up in a towel. I put hot sauce on the towel. He wake up the next morning, he'd be. So that's the reason why he don't like the hot sauce. But uh, getting on to the uh, high school years, he'd run track. And uh, I think he run track to get out of housework. <laughs> Where's Bobby? Oh, he he gone running. Okay, we get him when he get back. And then there were the college years. I'm skipping over a lot of stuff. That that was the college years, and uh, we used to have this re two door refrigerator. And the bottom part stopped working, and the top part was the refrigerator. You know, and the bottom part was hot, so we had to put everything in the top. And every day I get home from work, I wanted, all I wanted was a big 
cup of iced tea. You know, I couldn't get that because we didn't have ice. So one day I got home from work, and I just absentmindedly went into the refrigerator, got some ice, and sit down. I say, wait a minute. They say, you know that? I say, yeah, where'd that come from? He had bought me a refrigerator. <laughs> I mean, there are other things that he's done, you know, in my life. But, uh, then as the youth church, you know, I would help him out in the kitchen. And I think he wanted me there because he wanted to know how many ways I could cook hamburger meat. And, how <laughs> <laughs> and also how many ways I could cook chicken. But uh, he would help out. I would help him in the youth church. And I admire the way that, you know, he took over and he'd do the food bag and the senior ministry, and you know, on through the years, and work with Pastor Abraham, and now under Reverend Davis. And uh, I thank God for him that he allowed me <sighs> to be his mother. And if I can't say anything else, well, one thing, before you always have a scripture to back it up, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had that scripture. When uh, Jesus was baptized, and he came up out of the water, and his dove sh showed, if I can't say anything else, Bobby. I can say, this is my beloved son, whom I'm well pleased. <laughs> Let the church say amen. amen. Not as good as uh, Katie, so I have to write some of my stuff down, if y'all don't mind. Uh, but, but it reflects my heart. Um, you know, first, uh, Rev, you know, to my great friend, you know, someone who I've known since our teenage years, you know, I want to say congratulations on 30 years of allowing the Lord to use you in proclaiming his gospel. You know, from your initial calling to a youth pastor and now, pastor of congregational care here at our church. You know, someone who I've partnered with in ministry, you know, from serving the Lord's Supper and visiting members and friends in their homes, you know, during difficult times. You know, but on a personal note, you know, your ministry to me is a ministry of being there, of being present in good times and when things are not so good. A ministry whose reach or impact has gone far beyond the pulpit. You've always made it about the other person your reach embodied a spirit of being present. Rev is somebody that'll say, I'm there regardless of the situation, or oftentimes regardless of his situation. He'll say, I'm on the way, I'm there. He's been there with me in high points of my life, whether from growth in a spiritual capacity or personal milestones that ranges from marriage, a new house, kids' birthday parties, or even a corporate promotion. And even many low points in my life, would somehow showing up at the hospital while I was sick in ICU, even though I didn't want anyone to see me in that capacity outside of my immediate family. You know, he stopped by, he was there, and he read scripture and he prayed with me. Another example went from one extreme to almost immediately to another. He was with me from toasting champagne in a high moment of New Year's Eve to a few hours later standing with me behind yellow tape, which is one of the lowest moments in my life but he was there standing with me in the early hours of the morning, just assuring me that he would stand there as long as me, as long as I needed him to. Regardless of the smiles or the tears, his ministerial reach is not just from what he says while he's preaching, but being there with you. When life happens to you, he's there. In simple terms, you know, there's a song that says, walk it like I talk it. Yeah. To coin Reverend Thomas's ministry, would be reach it like I preach it. He'll let us walk in through the talking or his reaching through the preaching. He'll inconvenience himself to convenience you. I can't cover it all here, 
but the reach of his ministry to me is exemplary on all fronts. We can be real with each other as friends, or as he would say, boys, from Reverend to Deacon, while life happens to us, we don't question each other when we have questions for God. There are many times when we've had more questions than answers, but we can be, on a, we can be a personal outlet to each other, not judgmental of each other. We understand that the two, we're two brothers that don't get it all right, don't have it all right, but we have a common bond in our faith that makes it all right. In closing, to someone who's always there for others, to congratulate, to support, to build up, to celebrate, today is your day that we congratulate, that we support, that we build up, and that we celebrate you. Congrats, Reverend Thomas, on 30 years of allowing God to speak through you. Keep walking like you're talking, or better yet, reaching it like you're preaching. God bless you. Good morning. <laughs> Giving all praises to God, reverence to Pastor Davis, associate ministers, and my boy, my brother from another mother. It's funny. Um, and the Bella Vesta family. Um, Reverend Thomas, I'll refer to him as Reverend Thomas today. We have an ongoing thing. We'll go out and, and have dinner and whatnot. And I'll tell Reverend Thomas, look, if Bill Avissa asked me to stand up and speak about Bobby Thomas, I don't know Bobby, but I know Reverend Thomas. <laughs> and so today you can sit <laughs> and be okay because I'm talking about Reverend Thomas today. <laughs> well, go on with the fellas, stay with the fellas. <laughs> no, but Reverend Thomas um, and I, we grew up in this church together. Uh, we were knee high to a grasshopper, crawling under the old bleachers, and, and uh, we were in the chair choir together when we wore our triangles. Uh, we had the Shepherd Boys League and the YGA. Bobby probably knows the, the motto. I've forgotten it. I don't know it. Uh, we've, we've grown up together, pretty much. We've had the baseball, the, the, ba uh, the Bella Vesta baseball team. Uh, I was on the spoilers. And there was a reason because we kept losing. I think he was the Bears or the A's or something like that. Uh, but we, we, we've been friends a long time, uh, almost 45 years, I would say, at least. Um, I can remember growing up, doing our thing, but one thing I, I remembered about Reverend Thomas is his consistency with Reverend Abraham. I mean, the man was his shadow. Everywhere you saw Pastor Abraham, you saw Bobby. Yes, sir. Everything that Pastor did, Bobby did. Whether it was visiting the sick in the hospital or uh, eulogizing funerals or uh, going out, uh, Frederick had mentioned uh, doing the Lord's Supper in other folks' homes and, and all things of that nature. You know, and, I'm, and I look at that and I'm reminded of Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant in the sense that Mike was the standard in the NBA in the 90s, right? Everybody wanted to be like Mike, but one came close, Kobe. Why did Kobe come close? Because his eyes were set on the prize, on Mike. Kobe had to walk like Mike. Kobe chewed his gum like Mike. Kobe had a fadeaway like Mike. Kobe had a, 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 a free throw like Mike, you know? And I'm reminded of that, and I see Reverend Thomas and Pastor Abraham was his Michael Jordan. Pastor Abraham was his Michael Jordan. Whatever Rev did, Bobby did it. That was the blueprint. He's attended my daughter's uh, wedding. He's, he's, he's been an example for my children. Uh, he's wrote letters to, uh, for colleges for my kids. Uh, he's just been there. He's been to my grandmother's house, ate her food. I've heard, I've, I've heard other stories about how Pastor Thomas has been out, uh, Reverend Thomas has been out, and, and just, he's been a ministry to everyone that needed him. And, and that's what God gives us. Brother, I am proud of you. I come here and I celebrate you. 
on behalf of Oliver, Cedric, Steve, Leroy, Frederick, Walter, am I missing anybody? Mike. <laughs> Mike is our friends, only on the leap year. He barely come around, but he's our buddy. We congratulate you, we love you, and we'll see you in the cash app. Come on, church, praise God for that. Sister Thomas, Brother Frederick. Amen. We honor the Lord. You, you all right? No? You sure? It's about to get worse. All right. All right. And I hope y'all don't mind us doing this, y'all. We, we got to, we, when folk have served and served well, Listen, so we, we, got a, we got a couple things, man. 30 years is no, no trite thing. Uh, that's, a, that's a major milestone moment. And um, let me first, let me back up and say this. So, um, well, this was brought to me. Uh, it was brought to me by, by your niece, Andrea. And uh, she said, you know, we just want to maybe, you know, get him a card or, you know, just have a little small. I said, no, a card is too easy. You know, we, we can do a card like Bella Vista can do cards. You know, it ain't hard for us to do cards. I said, for 30 years, we, we got we to gotta take it up a notch, maybe two or three. And um, so I asked some questions, and we, we did some things, and we, we want to we sow them into your life uh, today. The first of which is just a, a recognition from our church, man. Come on this way. Come on. We want to give you this. It's, it's a plaque, and it says, presented to Reverend Bobby D. Thomas this seventh day of April, 2024, faithful servant. Your faithful service is an offering to God. He will not forget how you have shown the past, these past 30 years as member, youth, pastor, and now pastor of congregational care. Thank you. And this comes from the Bella Vista, Bella Vista Missionary Baptist Church. And Jakari Davis, senior pastor, man, we want you to have that just to, as a token of celebration and recognition of this day. Now, if I'm correct, the 10th is the actual day. The 10th is the actual day, but we wanted to do it today in celebration of these 30 years. Don't go nowhere. Don't move. All right? Uh, we were also told, you know, I, I asked, I said, well, what, 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 is, what is something that Pastor Thomas needs in, in his life right now. And uh, it was told to me, and I said, well, Pastor, he's, you know, he's a little bit tired. He has a lot on his plate, a lot of things going on, and um, he, just, he just needs some time. He needs some time to, to, to recuperate. And so I got uh, with our church business administrator and our financial secretary, and uh, we're going to sow some rest into you. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we want to give to you this gift certificate. Uh, it's a two-night weekend getaway to the South Shore Resort and Convention Center uh, for you to go enjoy and maybe spend some time with your wife for a weekend just to have some time to relax. Yeah, yeah. Get you some rest, catch up on some sleep, and... Catch you some sun, just let it, let it pour into you. And uh, we want that to be a blessing to you. And I got one more thing personally from me that I wanted to give you, and it couldn't have come at a better segue uh, than from what uh, Brother Corey just said, uh, because I know how much uh, my predecessor meant and continues to mean uh, to Pastor Thomas. And I want to give you something that you can hang and you can always look at. I don't know if you got a space in your house. Yeah, man, I wanna, I wanna give this to you. Yeah, man. That you can always see he's with you in spirit and you have the memory of that, man. And so I wanted to bless you with that and 
that's just a token of my, my personal appreciation for who you are and for all you have done and for all you mean to us. Amen. Amen. Listen, it is, it's easy in ministry for people to sometimes underappreciate or not fully understand. And uh, I know what it's like to sometimes feel overlooked. And I don't ever want you to feel like that or anybody to feel like that. Uh, I wish we could do this for everybody. I really do. I wish we could do it for everybody. But there's something that the Word of God says, that those who serve and serve well are worthy of double honor. You don't get double honor just, just because. You, you got you to gotta serve and serve well. And so we wanted you to know today that you are worthy of double honor and that you are seen and we appreciate all that you do and we love you for all that you do and we praise God for these 30 years of ministry that you have sown into the Bella Vista Missionary Baptist Church. Come on church, one more time, help me celebrate him. Now, Pastor, if you want to say something, I, I give, you, give you a couple minutes, a couple minutes just to have some remarks, and I'll put those things away, away for you if you want me to. Uh, I knew something was up. Because my wife... I went to church with her Wednesday night at Fallbrook to see Fred Hammonds because I said in Braden, Pastor Penn, 30-year anniversary. And this morning, we went to see Charles Jenkins at Fallbrook, uh, the singer, the great Charles Jenkins at Fallbrook today, went to 8 o'clock service. But she came to church with me today. Because usually at the church, Eight o'clock, she go home and she be cooking right now. But she wanted to come with me today. I'm not preaching. I don't know why she want to come. <laughs> Thank you, Nene. Uh, I, Mama, wow. Yeah, I wasn't supposed to be born. My mama and daddy didn't plan me, but God did. Even today, this morning, Deacon, stand up, man. That, that's, that's, that's my, y'all know who that is. That's the only one who can't speak at my funeral, amen. <laughs> but even this morning, Pastor David, someone texted me and told me that had death in the family, even when I was on his way. So ministry never sleeps. It never sleeps. And phone rings all the time. And, but I understand I'm the extinction arm of the pastor. I have to take the pressure off of him so he can focus more on the words. So every time I go visit and minister, I do it, yes, for God, but to assist the pastor. That's why I do it. And I thank you, all the ministry. I, I'm, I'm just overwhelmed, my boys. <laughs> To me, y'all, y'all set me up. Y'all set me up. But I love your mama, Wenge. Sister Wenge, y'all, was gone. She, she, she was near, she couldn't talk or nothing. But look at her now. Look at her. To God be the glory. Y'all even have my grandson up there. Thank, I'm, I'm so happy. Thank you, Pastor. And thank you, everybody. I'm just, I love ministry. Pastor Abraham taught me that ministry is about people. It's bigger than these four walls. And so that's what he implanted in me. Adele, yeah, I know you had something to do with this, too. I know, I just seen you and all y'all. I know y'all did. But I love you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 
I love it. I love celebrating people. And I praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again for you, Pastor Thomas. And may God give you many more years, many more years of impacting and improving lives for God's people. Well, church, it's offering time. We praise the Lord for the privilege of giving. Won't linger here long. Our uh, media minister is going to put before us on the screens uh, our digital giving platforms, our giving mediums for those who are worshiping with us and for the first time so that they can see uh, the mode and the means by which we worship God in giving here at the Bella Vista Church. If you so desire, you take out your phone at this time and scan that QR code. Uh, it will take you directly to the giving page that is on our church website. Or if you want to type that website in manually, uh, you see bvmbc.org there. Uh, it'll, uh, on the home page of that site, uh, you'll drop down to the bottom and see the Give Online link, and it will take you to the giving page as well. If you desire to text to give, you can text the phone number that is before you, and it will send to you a giving prompt and a giving cue. Or if you want to mail your gift in to us, our church address is there as well. Mail it in, and it'll be collected in a safe and a secure way by members of our finance and security team. You got cash or check, um, hold it up, and we have ushers who are positioned who are going to be dispatched in a moment to gather those gifts. If you need an envelope, hold your hand up. They will bring to you an envelope as well uh, so that um, those gifts can be gathered. Please hold them high so that they might see you and um, those gifts might be gathered. Amen. Amen. Everybody giving online today? All right. Okay. We have, okay. Ushers, you're free to dispatch uh, and move about and gather those gifts. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Also, if you want to sow into Pastor Thomas today, if you want to just give him a gift of appreciation, I've asked the media team uh, to put his cash app on the screen. If you want to give it digitally, if you want to give it in the offering, you're more than welcome uh, to do that as well, uh, just to be a blessing to him uh, in, in any kind of way that you so choose or desire. Amen. You hit the power ball, you can repent by uh, just the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous and just make the check out to Bella Vista NBC, uh, dot org. Amen. Amen. Deacon Yarbrough, will you come and consecrate our gifts for us? Pastor Davis, I am so glad you called my name this morning. Before I bless the offerings, I have to say something about Bobby. During our softball years, Bobby was a kid with all Brother Blocker and all these guys. They was rascals, Pastor Davis. They were rascals. But it was something unique about Reverend Thomas because he would be the one to always try to calm it down. He would always try to calm it down as a little boy. Then when he went into the youth church as youth pastor, he started to grow. The unique thing that Reverend Thomas did that really stands out to me is we would go to Boy Scout camp way up in St. Marcus year after year after year. Reverend Thomas would drive up there by himself and give a sermon in those woods with all those people and it got to the point where they wanted to make him the pastor of the Boy Scout. <laughs> I just had to bring that up. Yeah. God is using you, yeah. and he's not finished yet, young That's man. Right. That's right. It's offering time, Bella Vista. God has been so good to this church, and he's not finished yet. So as you prepare your gifts on this morning, Bella Vesta. Just look up to the heavens which God, where God is and give God praise for what we have. Give God praise for what you are about to give back to him, a portion of what he asked you for. Yeah. Let us pray. Most gracious, eternal Heavenly Father, we come right now. We come, Lord, to give you praise. We come, Lord, to give you thanks. And we pray, Lord, as we prepare these gifts, Lord, 
that you will be able to take these gifts, multiply these gifts, Lord, and use them to, in the ongoing service of Bella Vesta's kingdom building. These prayers we pray in Jesus' name. Jesus. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Yarbrough. Two things. Uh, those uh, are teenagers. If you have a teen or if you are a teen, uh, we invite you to go across the street in our multipurpose building to be a part of your Bible study. Uh, your teachers and your leaders are waiting for you. And so parents, if you have a teen or if you are a teen in the sanctuary, you are, dis you are free to be dismissed at this time uh, to go across the street to participate in your Bible study for today. Additionally, let me remind us that after service or inform us that after the day, uh, after the service this morning and continued celebration of this 30 year milestone for Pastor Thomas, uh, we have some refreshments prepared across the street uh, where you can go over and partake of those as well as continue to celebrate and congratulate him. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Pastor, I don't know if you've been hearing uh, but our music ministry, Pastor Thomas, has also been charged today of singing some of your favorite songs. Uh, and so uh, all day long we've been singing songs that Pastor Thomas likes. And they're going to come back and bless us one more time as we prepare our hearts to receive the word of God. Amen.
Amen. That means it is so. To God be the glory. Father, now we ask and pray as we prepare to open up the scriptures that we might behold wondrous things out of your word. Speak to us anew and afresh. Help us to identify and to remove any distraction that might hinder us from clearly hearing what your spirit has to say to the church. Change, challenge, and convict us. Save us. Sanctify us and satisfy us in and through your word. You get all of the glory. and Grant us the blessing, blessings we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. God bless you, music ministry, uh, for leading us and blessing us today. Today. I was far spent. I'm going to try to get my, my point across uh, without editing too much substance out. Uh, but there's a word. We're in this season now. And what is known, well, on the Christian calendar, it we would be considered ordinary time, but we're in this post-resurrection season. We know as we've heard in our uh, announcements this morning, uh, we are leading up to a grand celebration of 73 years uh, as a church body, and we praise God for that. We praise God for 73 years. And uh, in this year where our focus, our aim, our endeavor has been on growing in faith and sowing in hope uh, as we lead up to that church anniversary celebration, which also happens this year to be on Pentecost Sunday, uh, which is the, the birth of the universal church. I, I want to begin a series of sermons today uh, that kind of incorporates those two realities. And I want to begin a series entitled The Aftermath growing in the power of the resurrection growing in the power of the resurrection uh, we proclaim that he lives so what does it mean for us as disciples to live as though we believe that he lives so i want to invite your attention today to the gospel of john and i want to take a look at a post resurrection narrative john Chapter number 20, beginning at verse number 19, concluding at verse number 23. And I'm reading this morning from the New Revised Standard Version of the Word of God. When you have it, say, I'm there. Listen to what the Word of God says. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Verse 19, it gives impetus for what I want to speak about today when it was evening on that day the first day of the week the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews in the aftermath of the resurrection as we live in the power of the resurrection it means for us that all fear is gone that's what I want to talk about today all fear is gone you may be seated 
presence of our God. Say that with me again. All fear is gone. Repeat it like you mean it. All fear is gone. Amen. Thank you, ushers. This passage, brothers and sisters, though it is highly inspirational, it presents to us an irony, a bit of a spiritual irony, if you will, of the highest order. The irony is quite blunt in that on the greatest day in the history of the world, the day that Jesus defeated death by taking away its sting and robbing the grave of its victory, the irony of this day is that the closest followers of Jesus, when we see them in this text, they are not disciples who are celebrating this victory of eternal magnitude, but rather we see disciples who are cowering in fear. Just a few hours earlier, Jesus, through the power of God, raised him from the dead and then discharged himself from the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, and he does so with angelic escorts. And it was through this act of resurrection that all of creation had been reclaimed, all of creation had been redeemed by God. The redemption of the world was carried out. It was completed on Calvary's cross. And this is why Jesus on that Friday would cry out this, these three words in English, but one word in the Greek, Jesus on that Friday would cry out, Tetelestai, meaning it is finished. But although the work of redemption had been completely finished and satisfied in heaven, the work of leading those who followed Jesus, those who had yet to come to know the power of God, the, the work of leading them into the way of Jesus Christ, that work had only just begun. The disciples would be charged with this continuation of the ministry of Jesus. They, they had been instructed, instructed on this several chapters earlier when he informed them, Jesus says, that the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. But then Jesus adds something to it. He says, you will not just do the works that I do, but he says, you will also do greater works than these because I'm going to the Father. They had been advised, the disciples, and they had been appointed for this season of life, yet when we see them gathered for the first time after the resurrection in the perceived absence of Jesus, the scriptures report they are locked away in fearful uncertainty about the future. And this morning, perhaps that's where some of you are settled and situated in life. Many of you listening to me are already saying that this sounds like my predicament. It sounds like my plot in life because while you have envisioned the past months and this year, perhaps to be filled with, with so much, so much achievement, so much alignment, so much access to new vistas and new experiences of life, when you look at the current condition and the circumstances of your life and how they have unexpectedly and involuntarily assigned you to a season that you didn't expect to be in, you find yourself living in fearful uncertainty about the forecast of your future. It doesn't, it doesn't take much. All, all you have to do is be what I like to call a conscientious observer. You can clearly see why some of us may have reason to fear. Look at the plights facing our social predicament. Each day, we are witnesses 
to the disruption of human decency in society. The economy is in a tailspin, rising costs, stagnant wages. Educational systems across the country are becoming increasingly discriminatory by the day. College tuition for aspiring students on, 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 on one end has become astronomical. And on the other end, student loan debt has enslaved the progress of another generation. Housing is becoming unaffordable. And we see in our own city how homelessness continues to increase. You turn on the news and you can see gun violence is up 60% in the state of Texas since the open carry gun laws went into effect in 2016 with the state of Texas being the leading state in the nation with deaths related to gun violence. These kind of things can make you fearful about the future nationally. Our nation is months away from a critical presidential election. It's going to determine the direction of our democracy. And I'm, I'm not trying to advocate practices of ageism, but, but, but one candidate is 81 years old, while the other candidate has 88 standing criminal indictments. with several bought and paid for Supreme Court justices aiding in the delay of justice being served. You think about something like that, that can make you fearful about the future. You look at your own life. You're afraid about what's going to become of your life. You, you're an employee that's been unexpectedly laid off or you're not getting enough hours to make things work. You're, you're grieving the hopes and the dreams of something you had been waiting on to happen, but because life took a turn, you're not sure if it ever will happen. You used to dream for the future. Now you dread the realities that you'll face tomorrow. You used to look forward to celebrations, but now you just lose sleep, worrying about the possibility of failure, that, that there was a season in your life when you could Remember that you had a lifetime to go. But now you're in the winter of life wondering what you might not get to see or experience in your own lifetime. Things like that can make you fearful about the future. That's the reality of life for all of us, that in some existential way, feelings of fear and uncertainty about the future can confine us to spaces of panic and paranoia. That what we see, hear, or don't fully understand can disorient us and disconnect us from the joy of life and carrying out of our purpose. It's not a foreign experience to any of us. But if that's where you are this morning, I want to slide into your spiritual DMs Offer you this word of hope that is rooted in the risen reality of Jesus Christ. Listen, beloved, life may have you in a season where you are forced to live in fearful uncertainty. But the reality of living and being in a relationship with the living Savior should be your confidence that Jesus lives within you to replace the fear that limits you with faith that can liberate you. I want to say that again. That Jesus lives within you to replace the fear that limits you with faith that can liberate you and set you free. I I'm saying that because Jesus lives... And because Jesus lives within you, 
your fear of what is unknown, your fear of what is unfamiliar, your fear of what is uncertain can be transformed into unflinching, unyielding, and unmovable faith because his power in your life is greater than any problem you may face. Y'all ain't shouting, so let me put it this way. Write it down. The omnipotence of God has never been confronted with a problem that it can't overcome. Church, church folk don't know when to get happy. I, I said the omnipotence of God has never been confronted with a problem that it couldn't overcome. I, and I preach the same gospel that I preached to you last Sunday. If the cross and the grave couldn't hold Jesus down, whatever you face can't or won't keep you down forever either because the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that's also at work in you if you really believe in the power of the resurrection. Let, let, let me say it like Paul said it. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, shall distress, shall persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Paul says, as it is written, for your sake, we are, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. But nay, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And when you know that you are more than a conqueror in Christ, Christ here's your testimony I'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor th nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God which is in Jesus Christ that nothing or no one can overcome the omnipotence of God and because of this reality here's your good news this morning that even from places of fear, the powerful presence of Jesus Christ can meet you where you are and minister to you so that stability can be restored to your faith. That, that this is your word this morning. That a growing relationship, a growing relationship with Jesus has relevance in your life right now because it proves that even in the midst of situations that are scary, situations that are shaking, God's power that's present in you can supply your spirit with what it needs to live beyond them even if the situation never changes. Y'all missed that? I said God's power can supply your spirit with what it needs to get through scary and shaky situations, even if the situation don't change. That God is in the business of changing spirits more than he is changing situations. Uh, and he does that because a person, a believer, with the right kind of spirit can keep their sanity and keep their stability no matter what the situation looks like on the outside. I wish I had a witness right there. Somebody who can testify that I've been in some situations that was shaky and scary and unstable and uncertain and insecure but because I had the Spirit of God on the inside of me, God didn't have to change the situation. God just had to change my spirit so I could face the situation with faith and confidence in my heart. That Jesus gives to us, I'm trying to get through it quick, 
an ocular demonstration of how the power, presence, and purpose of God will minister to you in your fear when your faith is having a bad day. Now that's only for real saints in the room who can be a witness that sometimes I don't care what you've seen Jesus do, how you've seen God make a way, there are some days and some situations that you can be confronted with and your faith will still have a bad day. But when your faith has a bad day, the Spirit will show up and minister to you. So that you don't fear what you're facing. That the Spirit can bring stability to your life and restore your faith. This is what happens to those disciples when they are locked in that upper room. The Bible says that on that day, the same day of the resurrection, later on that evening, that Jesus, as they are cowering in that upper room because of the fear of what might happen to them, the Bible says that the presence of God shows up. Jesus shows up and he begins to minister to their spirits that are fearful. And I had to ask the question of the text, what happens when you allow the powerful presence of Jesus Christ to minister to you when you're facing a situation that has you fearful? Write it down. Here's what happens if you let Jesus minister to you, if you let the resurrection minister to you in your fear. Jesus will recover your peace. Jesus will recover your peace. That when the uncertainties of life have fastened you to fear, that that can be a disruptive and disturbing season of worry and anxiety for you. That, that when you're living in, in that liminal space between what was your normal and, and what you anticipate will be your new normal. That you can become so fearful about your future. You can become so terrorized by your thoughts and unnerved by the unknown that you begin to live in a state of brokenness, confusion, and fragmentation. That when life as you know it has been changed, things can get real raggedy in your life. And when the disciples were in that room, because of the fear of what might happen to them, they were unaware that their fear had broken them to the point that they became dismissive of any hope beyond their present circumstances. Remember now, two of them that are in the room, Peter and John, had already went into the empty tomb earlier that day. They had seen the grave clothes that were wrapped around Jesus on that Friday. And after Mary Magdalene encountered Jesus in the garden, she went back and told the disciples that she had seen Jesus and the things that Jesus said to her. So when you connect all of these experiences, all of them should have had some hopeful influence to give the disciples an alternative outlook on their life. But fear had fractured them to the point where the only thing they could think about was the worst possible outcome. And beloved, that's what some of you are today. As you live where you live and see what you see and face what you face, the worry, the fear, and the anxiety of this season has you so broken emotionally, so broken spiritually, so disturbed psychologically that you can't allow yourself to function productively with where you are right now and you don't see how you're going to live life beyond the moment. Even with all you've seen, even with all you've heard, 
the only thing that has your attention is the possibility of a worst case scenario. Things will never get better. Things will never improve. Things will never come together. But I'm here to tell you and I'm moving that when the power of the resurrection shows up, God will show up with a blessing on his lips that will recover the peace that he's ordained for your life to experience. I, I'm not making it up. It's right there in black and white. Bible says, doors are locked. Jesus comes in and listen to the blessing. Peace be with you. Y'all missed it. Peace be with you. I, I, I see you in your fear, but peace be with you. I, I like it, Dr. Bingham, because it ain't just a word of relaxation. It, it's a word of recovery. It, it, it's rooted in irene, the New Testament. It's, it's, that's what the New Testament word for it. But the concept of it is, is, written, is, is written in the Old Testament context of shalom. Uh, uh, that, that it means to be in a place where you are fully blessed. Wholly blessed by God. It, it meant that every blessing that God has is available to your life no matter what you're experiencing in your life at the present. That the type of peace that Jesus recovers and pronounces over the disciples is the peace that helps them to live whole even though they're in a broken situation. And I hope you caught that this morning, that your life may have you in a place where spiritually and psychologically you are in a location of fear. But when you allow the power and the presence of God to gain access in your life, God will bless you with a peace that will enable you to live free in a situation that was designed to lock you down. That the presence of Jesus will recover the peace that God has for your life and build up every broken place that fear, worry, doubt, negativity, depression, pessimism, and fatalism has tried to destroy. That when you have been made whole by the peace of Jesus, I'm here to tell somebody you can face every disruption, you can face every concern, you can face every social shift, you can face every presidency, you can face every layoff, every hospital visit, every family disturbance, every every deferred dream or every denied opportunity and you can still face it declaring that no matter what's going on in my life I'm still going to live in peace I wish I had a witness here who can help me preach. You can say whatever I'm facing right now, I ain't going to let it take my peace. I'm still going to be healthy and happy. I'm still going to be healed and hopeful. I'm still going to be full and free. I'm still going to be blessed and balanced. I'm still going to be graced and grounded. I'm still going to be sustained and satisfied. I'm still going to be renewed and restored. I'm still going to be encouraged and edified. I'm going to be worship filled and I'm going to be worry free. Somebody ought to declare this morning that this joy that I have the world didn't give it and I ain't going to let the world take it away. I may lose some things along the way but I'm not letting go of my peace that God said was mine if I keep my mind stayed on him because he will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind will you let the spirit minister to you in your fear it'll recover your peace Jesus will recover your peace watch this not only will it recover your peace but Jesus also will restore your praise. That when you fully recognize who Jesus is and you are aware of the peace 
that he's brought into your life, you're not going to be able to help yourself and not give God praise. I, I might not get past this point and not bless his name. You, you'll praise God and you'll be compelled to worship God because you'll learn something in the process. You'll learn that God will use your human situation as a platform for spiritual revelation. Uh, you may not see it or understand it while you're facing it, while you're going through it, but God is trying to learn you something. The Spirit is trying to teach you something as you're going through your season of fear. That God will use that season of fear to bring you to a new level of revelation about Him so that you can offer Him more fervent praise. Jesus, watch him. He gives this blessing of peace. But then the Bible says he shows them something. He shows them his hands and then he shows them his side. And here's the line. When they saw his hands and when they saw his side, Bible says, then they rejoiced. They saw his hands they saw his side, and then they rejoice. That, that to cast aside any skepticism, Jesus says, let me show you my wounds from the cross so that I can verify for you and validate to you I'm not some imposter. I'm not some ghost or some apparition. I, I, I'm not some fragment of your imagination. That I'm the same one who was with you before Friday. I'm the same one standing with you here on Sunday night. Watch it. Jesus shows it to him. But that display was not just meant to be an act of identification. It was also meant to be an act of interpretation. That Jesus, again, he wants them to know something. And he wants them to know, here it is. That the peace that he's just given to them wouldn't have been possible if he had not been pierced. He has to show them that he was pierced so that they can appreciate the peace. Uh, if he had no scars they wouldn't have no shalom. If he had not endured pain on our behalf, we wouldn't enjoy peace on his behalf. Uh, Pastor Thomas, he was showing them what Isaiah prophesied. Surely, he has borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by those stripes we have been made healed. That Jesus is the source of their salvation, the fountain of their forgiveness, and the provider of their peace. And when they recognized who Jesus was, and what Jesus had did, Bible says they immediately went into postures of worship and postures of rejoicing and praise because they saw the Lord. They saw the Messiah. They saw the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I, I, I'm moving, but, but, but some of you know that, that when Jesus shows up in your places of fear, he not only shows, you to remind, shows up to remind you of who he is, but also to give you a new revelation of how his power can be manifested in your life. That the power of Jesus can give you blessings that you can't access on your own. 
Somebody can testify that it wasn't until life had gotten real scary. It wasn't until life had got real shaky that you really understood what the gospel and what the resurrection means to your life. It wasn't until you got scared in your sickness that you realized that if Jesus had the power to get up from a grave, he could heal my body. It, it wasn't until you were unemployed and things got shaky financially that you realized if Jesus got up from a grave, he's able to provide all of my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. It wasn't until life went into a different direction that was totally different from the one that you had planned now, that you begin to realize if Jesus got up from the grave he'll work all things together for my good and whenever you recognize what God can do that you can't do for yourself the only response you ought to have is uninhibited uh, unashamed unsolicited praise you know how you can worship him when things are shaky and uncertain here's what you got to do when I think of the goodness of Jesus that's all I got and all he's done for me I, I, I'm gonna stop right there we, I finish next week my soul cries out hallelujah that if you've ever seen God make a way that you couldn't make for yourself, if you've ever seen God move some things out of the way that you couldn't move for yourself, if you've ever seen God change some things that you couldn't change for yourself, it ought to remind you that because he lives, there is nothing that I face that God cannot change. And because he lives, he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all I could ask, think, or imagine. Is there anybody here can look back over your life? Some of you, it don't take that long. You can look back over this last week and see what God has done for you. See the mountains God moved out of the way. See the things that God turned around. And you're able to lift up your hands, open up your mouth, and say, I have no reason to fear. I'll bless his name even in the midst of my fear. I'll bless his name even in the midst of my trials, even in the midst of my trouble, even in the midst of my tribulation. I'll still bless his name. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify. The Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Here's my part. Oh, taste and see. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who trusts in him. Is there anybody here who can lift up your hands? You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't know what's going to happen next week. You don't know what's going to happen when you go to the courthouse. You don't know what's going to happen on your next doctor visit. But right now, you're going to lift up your hands. You're going to open up your mouth and say, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid when the wicked even my enemies came upon me to eat of my flesh they they stumbled and fell though a host should encamp against me 
my heart will not fear the wars rise against me in this will I be confident one thing that I desire of the Lord that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in the secret place of his pavilion shall he hide me is there anybody here who can testify I'm going to wait on the Lord and be of good courage for he will he will he will he will strengthen your heart say yeah yeah say yeah say yeah because he live i can face tomorrow because he live all fear is gone because i know who holds tomorrow life is worth the living just because he lives if you know you ain't got no reason to fear wanted to give him praise right where you are won't you bless his name you will have peace you will have peace you will have power you will have praise you will have a purpose God is gonna turn it around God is gonna make a way God is gonna open a door God is gonna come through God is gonna make a way say yeah say yeah say yeah I know that he will I know that he will I know that he will yeah yeah I'm trying to let it go y'all but I feel breakthrough in this place somebody in this room you've been crying yourself to sleep at night somebody in this room you about to pull all of your hair out somebody in this room your blood pressure been high your stress levels been up today God says let it go all fear is gone let it go now you ought to give God praise in advance for your peace that's going to be restored for your praise that's going to be recovered my, 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 my. hallelujah this ain't about nobody else it's about your peace it's about your praise. It's about your purpose. Give him glory. Hallelujah. 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 Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Peace. 
is mine. Peace is mine. Peace today is mine. I told Satan, Satan, you can't have my peace. Victory today, peace today is mine. Even from places of fear, if you really believe that he lives, the powerful presence of Jesus Christ that's also living within you can meet you in your place of fear and minister to you so that the stability of your faith in who Jesus is can be restored. He'll show up and recover your peace. He'll show up and restore your praise. You write the last one down. He'll show up to reinstate your purpose. That you ought to thank God that moments of fear don't cancel out God's purpose for your life. God says, I showed up while y'all were afraid, but that's all right. I still got something for y'all to do. As the Father sent me, so send I you. You still got purpose. Your life still has meaning. Don't think that just because your faith has had a bad day, that that means God has given up on you. That that means you don't really love God or that you don't trust God. Even Jesus' faith had a bad day. That Friday, he cried out, my God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? His faith had a bad day. But that never stopped his purpose. So if you are a resurrection believer, live like all fear is gone. And I got to say this because I don't want us to get confused. We're going to open the doors and get to the table. I'm not talking about momentary experiences of fear. We all have those. Things that just happen and they shock us and they scare us and they shake us. That's, that's not what the scripture is talking about. We all have those moments of fear. But people who are believers in Christ, you can have a moment but you ain't supposed to live in it. Don't live in your fear. I serve a living Savior who has demonstrated that he has all power over all things. And the God who did that is the God who's on my side. And I ain't got no reason to fear. All fear is gone. All fear is gone. If that's you today, let, let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word that has challenged us and convict us. Uh, some of us have come in to this place today fearful and anxious and worrying and fretting and uncertain about what we are facing or what we will face. Help us today to grow in the power of the resurrection. Help us to know and believe that your presence is within us, your spirit is within us to guide us and lead us into the truth of your word, to comfort us and be our peace but to also minister to us when we find ourselves in fear. Let those of us who have been living in fear this morning 
turn the page and start standing on our faith. May we stand on the promise and the presence of the one who said in three days I'll rise again and an empty grave is there to prove that he lives. God, remove our fear, remove our concern. Whatever it may be, if it's a fear about money, if it's a fear about family, if it's a fear about some legal matter, if it's a fear about church or what's going on in government, God, whatever it is, help us to be attentive, but God, don't let us be fearful. You got all power. All power belongs to you. And we trust in your power to deliver and to make all things well. Thank you for your word today. Now God save and add to your church. If it be your will, let someone move out of the fear of trusting you with their lives. Stand on faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, if you're physically able, stand with us real quick. I know we're over time. I know we're over time, but that's all right. Stand with us real quick. Stand with us real quick. Somebody here today. Somebody here today. We're here for you. You've been fearful about trusting Jesus Christ, about trusting God with your life. Today can be a day for you that all fear can be gone. You don't have to live in fear. You can walk in faith. And those who walk in faith, the Bible declares that they are justified. If that's you today, my brother, my sister, who never trusted Jesus, we're standing here to invite you and to welcome you to a loving and lasting relationship with him. We don't intend to be intimidating. We're just standing as an invitation. You say, Pastor, I, I, I have a relationship with Christ, but I'm not a part of a church where I'm growing in my Walk with Jesus Christ. We open the heart of Bella Vista to you today. If you need a church, if you need a church family, if you need brothers and sisters and a pastor, if you need a covering, we're here for you today. Come from wherever you are. We'd love to welcome you and embrace you as our new brother, our new sister, our new family member. Are you here today? If you have a desire, you feel a conviction to be baptized, come on, we'll receive you today in person or online, whatever your spiritual need is, come on this way. I will keep you in. Are you here? Perfect peace. Oh, whose mind is? Are you here? Are you here? I will keep him in prayer. Man, woman, boy, girl, no matter what age or stage. Oh, whose mind, whose mind is. Stay on thee. Stay on thee. You know the earth is the Lord's. And fullness thereof, the whole world and they that dwell therein all be. Are you here? He watches me. Why should I be bound? You may have your seats. We see there's room, but there is none. When God has said, Why should I be bound? When Jesus He has lifted Oh, 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 
Hallelujah. He is. Keeper of my soul. My soul. My soul. We come now to this moment of communion. Before I, before I, I, I do that, let me say, and I'm intentional about saying this because we have so many who do this. You say, Pastor, walking down the aisle, that's just that's a little too much for me. I get nervous in front of people. I understand that. Seeing all of us standing up here can be intimidating. If you have the desire in your heart, you're more than welcome once we give the benediction to come this way after worship. We will receive you and take you in the same way. It's not necessarily standing before the people. It's just making sure that we have a space where we extend to you that invitation. So if you say, I, I just couldn't make that walk in front of all those people, I understand. Make your way to see me or any one of these leaders and we will get you engrafted the same way. I am going to fellowship the, those new members after communion. We're going to get into communion. Let's repair our hearts and our minds and our spirits and I don't know about you, but those of you who were here for our Monday, Thursday service a couple of days ago, about a week ago, I, I can no longer, I no longer come to this table with the same level of understanding. When Dr. Pitts that evening unfold to us the deeper meaning of what it means to come to this table of remembrance. That it's not necessarily just about the meal, to just make it about the bread and, and the cup. That's a very surface understanding. Dr. Pitts told us they had been eating bread and drinking from cups for thousands of years. Jesus didn't do anything new with bread and cup that night. But what he did add was a different meaning. That new covenant, that new testament in my blood that Jesus was saying to them, in the same way that I'm willing to lay my life down and sacrifice precious things in service to other people. When he says, do this, that's the this he's talking about. I, I want you to be a person who lives like that, who sacrifices, who gives. And so in that, I know we normally sing songs that are centered around the blood of Christ and the body of Christ. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. And we'll continue to do so beyond this moment. But today, I, I want us to lift up a different song. We're going to hear it in a moment after our scripture has been read and our prayers have been prayed. It simply says, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary, Lord, for you. We're going to sing that together in a moment. But now let us hear readings from the word of God and hear a prayer of consecration. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at verse 23, reads this way. For I have received from the Lord that which also I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Let us all pray. Our Father, our awesome God, we come to you, dear Father God, eternally grateful for the things that we've already experienced, dear Father. We thank you, dear Father God, for the word that was preached. We thank you for the celebration of Pastor Bobby Thomas, dear Father God. But at this moment, dear Father God, we've come to celebrate what you did for us, dear Father. We thank you, dear Father God, for surrendering yourself to the cross. We thank you for taking the nails and the spikes. We thank you for being lifted up high and dropped down low. 
We thank you, dear Father God, for giving up the ghost, dear Father God, that you might be buried in a borrowed tomb. But we're even more grateful for that Sunday morning that you got up early with all power in your hands. We thank you, dear Father God, for hanging around for 40 more days, dear Father God, until you ascended into heaven and are seated at the right hand of the Father. But we're also looking forward, dear Father God, to the day that you will come to gather us all together in the skies to meet you in the air. But until that day comes, dear Father God, we're going to celebrate you, dear Father God. We're going to celebrate, dear Father God, because you didn't have to do it. We celebrate, dear Father God, you, because you surrendered to do it because of the love that you have for us. And we ask that if you would, please, dear Father God, to give us the strength, dear Father, to surrender the love that we have to you so that we will serve you, dear Father God, in the way that you deserve to be served. We thank you. We love you. We always do the best that we can do to glorify you. This prayer we pray in Jesus Christ's name and all of God's people said, Amen. This time, if you were not served as you entered in today, we're going to ask you to hold up your hand. Our deacon leaders are preparing to come and serve you at this time. And please, will you do us the kindness as high as you can lift it without it being a discomfort uh, so that they can see you. Amen. Let's sing together. Lord, prepare to be a sanctuary. Sanctuary. Pure and holy. Try the truth. And with thanksgiving. Sanctuary. Sing it till it gets in your spirit. Lord, prepare me. Break bread together. Drink the wine. Wine together. Let 
faithful trust that all have been served. This first element that we take, this wafer, this bread, it sim symbolizes the body of our Lord and Savior. His body that on that Thursday evening and on in the early hours of that Friday morning was beaten, battered and bloodied and bruised. The stripes for our spiritual healing were laid upon him. And Isaiah does rightfully, rightfully declare that by those stripes, we have been made healed because it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God through him. As we remember his body, let us eat the bread together in communion. In the same way we lift this cup and the elements in this cup, they are symbols of the shed blood of the Savior. His blood that was poured out on the cross of Calvary, the blood that came streaming down. But we thank God for the blood because without its shedding, there is no remission for our sin. That on the account of of our sin debt, Jesus' blood stamped it, paid in full. As we remember his blood, let us drink the cup together in communion. Father God, we thank you for Jesus Christ, for the selfless sacrifice, for the encouraging example that God, you gave us all that you had. You sacrificed the best of what you had, even your only begotten son, sending him to us not to condemn us, but that through him we might be saved. Thank you for his life, for his love. Thank you for his sacrifice, but more than all, we thank you for his resurrection, that he ever lives, seated at your right hand to make intercession for us. Now those of us who are his disciples and are filled with his spirit, as we prepare to leave out of this place, let us leave refilled and empowered to be salt in the earth and to be light of the world that people may see our good works and give glory to your name, our Father who is in heaven. Thank you today for so great a Savior and so great a salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Will you give me two minutes as we celebrate our baptismal candidates on today? And then we're going to give the benediction and leave from this place. Amen. Brother Christian Davis, Brother Reginald Collins, Brother Kenny Crawford. Brothers, will you come this way and stand right there in front of that table for us? Amen. Brother Crawford is coming from the balcony. So we're going to give him a moment to give, get here. Come on, church. Thank God for these young men today. I want to say to each of you, as he's making his way down, and I know that he can hear me, I want to say to each of you today again just how godly proud we are of you, even as I mentioned to you upstairs 
as we were preparing for this morning, uh, that this is a significant day in your life. We know that we're saved by the blood, but not by baptism. But even baptism says something about the seriousness of the faith that we have in Christ. And although you are in various ages and stages of life, it's a wonderful picture when you look at it. Uh, different generations, different stages of life. And all of you have made the decision today to come and be baptized and to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. We continue to celebrate with you. And in that celebration, and as a token of memorial and memory, we want to give to you these certificates of baptism, congratulating you on this day. We hope that you would frame them somewhere so that you can always see and be reminded that in life you have no reason to fear because you belong to a great God who does great things and that you're also part of a larger spiritual family the family of faith in Jesus Christ. And so, Brother Christian Davis, we give to you this certificate of congratulations, and we thank God for you. And we also give to you this token of celebration on behalf of the youth ministry. So we want to celebrate with you today. Brother Reginald Collins, my brother, God be praised for you today. Congratulations on this milestone moment in your life. And then to you, Brother Kenny Crawford, we give this to you. Your baptismal certificate is in there, and I believe all of the information regarding your new members, uh, your new members' information as well. So we honor the Lord for you, and we thank the Lord for your presence and celebrate all that God is doing in your lives. God bless you, and we praise God for you. Journey, did I have something? She want to join church. Okay. Hey, Miss Journey. <laughs> y'all, gentlemen, y'all can return to your seats. How you doing? How you doing? You want to come and be a part of the church today? I'm glad you do. I'm glad you do. Come on, y'all help me celebrate. I call her baby doll. She just looks like a little doll. All right. Well, we definitely, we definitely want to get you, get you a part of the church. Amen. So I can chase you around like you like chasing me around, okay? We're going to do that. We're going to do that. Uh, but Sister Comier, Dr. Comier, uh, she's going to share some information with you. She's coming down now. So as soon as she comes down, you all are more than welcome to go. Uh, to the back so that we can get all the information we don't already know about you. All right? Good deal. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Okay. All right. Church, what a wonderful day of worship this has been, and we honor the Lord. I want to thank you for thank you for your forbearance and for your, your patience today. Um, we had to take time to celebrate 30 years. We had to do that. We had to do that. We had to do that. So I, I appreciate you you staying and making the investment of time. Amen. If you complain in your car, I don't mind. But thank you for staying. Thank you for staying and for celebrating. And again, I want to remind you that we do have uh, some refreshments prepared in our multipurpose building and continued celebration of Pastor Thomas's 30th year of preaching and ministry. Unit number three, that is Deacon Willie Yarbrough's unit. Uh, there is a unit meeting today. Well, I'm really sorry because I didn't know y'all had a unit meeting. Uh, it's going to be on the left side. Is that my left or their left? Okay. It's going to be on your left. So my right, your left. Uh, there will be a unit meeting for unit number three, Deacon Willie Yarbrough's unit. To God be the glory for all that we have seen and heard this day. Let's stand to our feet. Join us this week for our 714 a.m. prayer call as well as our Tuesday evening powerful life, Bible study, and prayer experience as well as we continue to grow in faith and so in hope with one another. Seeing that the hour is far spent, lift your hand so that I may impart unto you this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to smile upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Go always remembering the name of Jesus, always keeping him on your mind. Go knowing that because Jesus lives, all fear is gone. Have peace. Keep a praise in your heart and know that you still have a purpose. In Jesus' name, we all said together, amen, and praise the Lord. God bless you. Have a great week. You are dismissed. Thank you for watching. Good morning, Bella Vista family and friends. Here are your announcements for the week. Ladies, save the date for the Sisterhood Social hosted by Sisters in the Spirit on Saturday, April 20th from noon to 2 p.m. You will enjoy an afternoon of painting, eating, and fellowship. 
You may register for this event in the foyer after 10 a.m. service from March 31st through April 14th. The cost is $15 per person. Space is limited, so be sure to register early. Save the date for May 19th as we gear up to celebrate our 73rd church anniversary. In preparation for our church anniversary this year, we are asking each member to donate $100 to the church anniversary. You may give through our many giving options, including text to give, online giving, or in person. The youth ministry would like to thank each and every one of you who supported our Good Friday egg hunt. Thank you for all the financial donations, candy, thousands of eggs, and also to the volunteers. We love and appreciate you. The youth ministry will be collecting toiletry donations for youth of color in foster care for the entire month of April. When our children are placed in foster care, agencies do not have adequate supplies to meet the needs of children of color. The youth ministry will be donating hair care products, soaps, oils, lotions, and feminine care products to the Harris County Rainbow Room. Donations may be left in the foyer of the main sanctuary. Please contact Sister Leslie Cunningham for more information. Bella Vista, join us as we go blue Sunday, April 21st in solidarity against child abuse and to also bring awareness to autism. The Bella Vista Annual Book Drive will be April 21st. There will be books for all ages. For more information, please contact Brother and Sister Morgan. Join us Sunday, April 21st in the Multipurpose Building after service for Sundays on Sunday. Youth Sunday School will be returning in May. If you are interested in volunteering as a teacher, please contact Sister Leslie Cunningham. Beginning in the month of May, join Pastor Davis, Pastor Bobby Thomas, and Reverend Eric Bingham each week for our Power for Life Bible study to grow in your understanding of God's Word. An in-person Bible study option will be available at 7.30 p.m. on Tuesdays, and the online virtual option will remain on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Join us in either one of those experiences and receive Power for Life. The men's ministry will be having their bi-monthly meeting on Monday, April 8th from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. in the Multipurpose Building. Pastor Davis will be speaking on the lesson topic, Life Coach, from Isaiah 9 and 6. If you have announcements to share, please be aware the deadline is Wednesdays at 2 p.m. You can email your announcement to announcements at bellavistanbc.org or kpriester at bellavistanbc.org. Stay safe, family, and as always, everyone, have a great week.